Hey guys, here we are with Ron and Diana, the masterminds behind Outlander, super cool stars series. Uh, we're going to jump right into a bit of spoiler talk here, be warned. The last episode of the first season had people talking. Did you expect that reaction? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we knew, like, as soon as we agreed to do the show, we knew where it was going, so we knew yeah. that was going to be a big controversial end of the yeah. series and yeah. the end yeah. of the story, so we were kind of prepared for it, yeah. Was there ever any talk about changing it or softening it? I mean, I know you guys don't want to do that, but like from like the network level or something. The network never wants no, no, anything. They were very no. supportive. Yeah, yeah, we were very pleased. Yeah. Okay, which is nice. It was uh, great. I mean, this is one of the things about cable TV now, right? You can you do stuff things. like that. You, <laughs> you don't can. have to, right? So, what can we expect if you if you're not familiar with the book? What can we expect to to come next in season two? Well, the second season picks up uh, from the end of the first. You know, the last time we saw Claire and Jamie, they were on the ship uh, heading for France and had uh, decided to try to change the course of history and stop the Jacobite Rebellion. And that sort of defines, you know, the beginning of the second season, where we go to France, we go to Paris, uh, you start uh, seeing a whole new show. I mean, it really looks completely different than season one of Outlander in that you're in a uh, you know, very urban environment. It's the aristocracy, it's the court of Louis XV. You're starting to meet historical characters like uh, Prince Charlie and you're getting involved in the Jacobite Rebellion and the politics. So it's a very, very different different series, at least where it begins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have we left behind mu um, much of the first season cast then, because uh, the supporting cast as a result of the location change? Uh, quite a few of them are still there, and more of them will be coming back when the show, the second half of the show moves back to Scotland. Okay, <laughs> all right. So now how is it for you guys as creators? I mean, I know you're not on set all the time, but just to make that move in, in location, uh, is, I mean, it's so beautiful, the, the first season in Scotland. It's gorgeous, yeah. Was it jarring to suddenly be out of the green, sort of? It's, it's a change. Yeah. It's a, it's a it, it, shock to the senses. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough on the production because you're essentially rebuilding the show because you know there were no sets or costumes or props or anything that we could use uh, from Scotland to be in Paris. So we had to really redesign a whole new series. So it was a big challenge just from a production standpoint. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the most interesting things about Outlander, I think, is Claire's. Claire is obviously our, our hero or our heroine, sure. and yet she, you could argue that she's betrayed her husband, her, her first husband, right? Maybe betray is not the right <laughs> word, but it's very complicated. It's very complicated and nuanced situation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, in portraying that on the screen, do you ever worry that she is going to come across unsympathetic? I mean, have there been times where you've had to snip things or pulled back a little bit? I don't think so. It's uh, they've done that part of the show very truly to the book, and uh, I like moral ambiguity. So there's a lot of it in yes. these books. But uh, if you portray a character's circumstances, you know, very obviously and honestly, then the uh, the audience will sympathize with that character. They understand why yeah. he or she is doing this or that. Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of, of altering history. I mean, obviously, with your Star Trek. <laughs> that history. Uh, <laughs> I've been around the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's uh, you know it's a very complicated idea. It, is there ever the worry that it, it gets too complicated for the average sort of viewer who maybe doesn't know science fiction or? Not so far. I mean, you know, no, I think it's, it's complex and interesting. But I think you know, I I think today's audience in a real sense wants it to be complex and interesting, and they want to be challenged, and they want to sort of not be led by the hand and make everything just so simplistic. So I think one of the strengths of the show is the complexity that Diana had in the novels that sort of drew me in and has drawn readers in for so long because it is an interesting, elaborate tapestry of a lot of different characters and motivations and the time travel aspect and the politics, and I think that's all really to our benefit. Yeah. And what's nice too nowadays is, is if you don't quite get something, you can just rewind on the DVR anyway, right? <laughs> That's so, a help, yes. Um, so, uh, what, how much room is there to, to depart from the books? Not that you want to or need to, but do you guys feel that oh, you, you can need do to? Oh, you need to, believe me. Yeah, they only have 16 hours. Outlander is the shortest of my books at 300,000 words. Wow. And, you know, I read it myself for a recording for the blind service. It took me 32 hours to read it out wow. loud. Wow. <laughs> <Level of fulfillment. laughs> yeah, they have to do things. Uh, but they've done a wonderful job with the adaptation, with preserving, you know, the essentials of the storyline and especially the deepness of the emotional interactions that give the story its power. 
do you, do you, when you watch it, do you sometimes miss things like, oh? Uh, oh, yeah, tons of things. Yeah. But, you know, you just can't have everything. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I feel that way, too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you're always cutting things from script or you're cutting things in the editing room. Mm -hmm. There's always a part of you that's going, oh, I wish we had found a way to fit that in or yeah. I wish we had done that. But, you know, you, you, you take your best shot and you just try yeah. to make the best show you can. Yeah. And I know you're obviously a big fan of the books. I've heard the story about how I think your wife turned, right. turned you <laughs> on to them. Uh, have you been able to, have you guys seen any evidence that the books have, have found more of a following because of the show perhaps oh heck yes <laughs> yeah yes yeah. yeah. okay i remember i was here last year when you guys were here and i had some, a woman outside the hall begging me to get her in somehow but she wanted to get the free swag they were giving away for oh. outlander oh, really? i don't think it had even aired yet at that no, point no no you have a very devoted fa fan we have following, a, a right? great fandom <laughs> <laughs> so is that a way that you two can connect because obviously your star trek and Battlestar galactica background it has uh -huh. the, you know, the, you've got those fans and then you have your fans yeah. it's like you ever bond over like a, a drink or like oh <laughs> I have this crazy story about you know. <laughs> we have a lot in common let's put <laughs> <Yeah>. it that way <laughs> uh i i caught both of your cameos yeah in the first season right are we going to see you guys on camera yeah. again or I, i'm not planning on doing it again <laughs> was it's, it tough or it's hard you're standing in these heavy your costume is probably 10 times heavier than mine was but they're it heavy was, but... woolen costumes <laughs> yeah. you stand you know the life yeah. of a background player or an extra is not an easy one yeah. So you're there yeah, for uh -huh. long hours. It's a thankless mm -hmm. task, and I, uh, I'm not eager to do it again. Even when you're the, you don't get special treatment as the creator. You know, it's no, not no. cool when you're running the show to yeah. be the extra that gets all the special treatment. No, so you're you try to just blend in with everybody else. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's like there's that code on set, I guess. Right? Yeah, it's like, so don't, don't be that guy. <laughs> so again, as someone who hasn't read the books, it, um, it, you know, I, there was certain things that happened in season one that were shocking. Are yes. we, are we going to keep being shocked? I mean, I don't want you to give anything yes, away. Yes, but not but in the same way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely twists and turns and reversals of fortune. And, you know, that's one of the great things of the story. It's, it's, it's a uh, long, interesting yarn with a lot of places that you don't expect to go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you said you're going to France. Uh, in, the, in the future of the series, do you continue the sort of globe trot a bit or yeah the books go where history went yeah and people say oh why did you leave scotland i love scotland right. i said well because the scots left scotland you know, <laughs> at this particular point you know, there's nothing going on in scotland after they left <laughs> and well, you know one of the things i like about it too is it really is a history lesson like is, I, yeah. i'm learning about things that i've been you know is vaguely aware of yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I think it's great fun, and, I, and I, th uh, I think it's really interesting how it appeals to two different demographics as well, you know, like the, the men and the women both seem yeah. to really be into it. They do. Uh, that's one thing I was concerned with when the books were originally published. I said, I do not want you to sell them as women's fiction because there are things in these that men see that women don't. They right. respond to it on a completely different level. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's well, the opposite challenge that we had on Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Right. Because Battlestar Galactica on the Sci-Fi Channel was hard to get women <laughs> yeah. to go down that aisle, yeah. and you know now getting men to go down this aisle. So I hear sort of the flip thing yeah. that I used to hear. I used to hear I got my girlfriend to watch Battlestar. Yeah. Now I hear I got my boyfriend yes. to watch yeah. Outlander, yeah. which is nice to hear. I'm sure. Yeah, it is nice. yeah, word well, of mouth is the best thing yes. you can get. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Our pleasure. Good luck thank at the you. rest of the show, and for all of your Comic Con needs, keep it locked to IGN. <laughs>